I'm delighted now to be joined by Dr. Sarinda Biring, co-author of a paper of a randomised trial of gabapentin for chronic refractory cough. Sarinda, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I wonder if we could start, if you could just explain um, and define what chronic refractory cough actually is. Uh, yes, uh, a uh, chronic refractory cough is a term we use for a condition uh, uh, that is a long-standing cough uh, that remains unexplained. It's not a cough due to uh, known lung causes such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or asthma or lung cancer or TB. Uh, it's not due to smoking, it's not due to common causes, uh, other common causes such as uh, post-nasal drip or gastroesophageal reflux. Um, it's sometimes known as uh, cough hypersensitivity syndrome or a sensory neuropathic cough. Uh, it's a very challenging condition to, uh, to manage. And how serious is it? To, to an individual with a chronic cough, it's a very serious condition. Uh, it's not, uh, not life-threatening, but, uh, but living with a chronic cough uh, can have serious consequences. Uh, for example, uh, patients uh, may complain that their cough has led to symptoms of uh, urine incontinence, um, it may lead to blackouts or loss of consciousness. It can lead to symptoms of chest pain, uh, vomiting or, or retching. Uh, disturbed sleep is also common. So it can have profound uh, impact on quality of life. Patients are also very self-aware of their condition and its impact on others around them. So uh, uh, patients generally tend to avoid social contact, going out for example, even uh, having a conversation or answering the telephone is a real or ordeal for patients with chronic cough. And uh, it also has a significant impact on those around patients with a chronic cough. So partners may complain of disturbed sleep. Uh, it's not good uh, having to put up with patients listening to a cough throughout the day. Uh, patients are also very self-aware. So for example, if they're standing in a queue, um, others may uh, they're very uh, self-aware that others may think they have a serious illness, uh, they may have, may have something catchy. Uh, uh, so uh, so to, to an individual with a chronic cough, it, it's a profound symptom uh, uh, and makes them miserable. Why is it so challenging to treat? A wide range of conditions can uh, present with this uh, s s symptom. Um, the diagnosis is often not clear from uh, uh, simple evaluation and examination and even after preliminary investigations and uh, patients often have to endure multiple hospital visits, multiple uh, investigations and trials of treatment and uh, in about 40% uh, of subjects that are referred to uh, specialist uh, clinics uh, they remain unexplained uh, and that is the term we use for chronic refractory cough. And how serious is it for a patient? To an individual with chronic uh, cough, it, it's a very serious condition. It, it's not life-threatening, uh, but uh, it does lead to serious uh, adverse uh, symptoms. Uh, for example, uh, uh, urine incontinence is, is very common uh, in, in, in patients with a chronic cough. Uh, they often complain of uh, blackouts or loss of consciousness, uh, chest pains, headaches. They also very embarrassed, very self-aware of the symptoms, so they avoid going out, uh, meeting people, having social contact. It also affects their uh, uh, partners or, or people around them. It can disturb their sleep. Uh, others may think they have a, a, a very catchy uh, illness, uh, so it, it has a profound impact. Um, is this something that's very common? How many people suffer from, from cro chronic refractory cough? Cough can be the presenting feature of a wide range of conditions, so, so it's a very common problem. Um, th there have been uh, uh, population surveys uh, that have uh, estimated the prevalence of chronic cough to be around 12%, so, 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 so it's a very common condition. It, in about half of those patients, it, was, it, it had a, a significant impact on uh, daily living and, uh, and, and their quality of life. Um, uh, for any uh, chest physician, uh, respiratory physician managing this condition, uh, about 10 to 20 percent of referrals are for patients for, with, with a chronic cough. Uh, and in about uh, 40 percent of those, uh, they remain unexplained. Uh, so it's a very challenging condition. 
So what were the aims of this trial then? So the aims of this trial was, that was to uh, um, evaluate uh, a, uh, a treatment, a drug called gabapentin, that's uh, uh, currently available for uh, a, a range of neurological conditions, particularly neuropathic pain. This is a uh, disorder uh, of pain resulting from nerve damage. Um, and uh, neuropathic pain and cough share similar biological mechanisms. Uh, and there have uh, been uh, early case reports of uh, gabapentin being effective in patients with chronic cough. So, uh, so the aim of this study was to evaluate uh, uh, the, the efficacy, efficacy of uh, gabapentin in a randomised controlled trial. So what biological role could, could gabapentin actually play in this context then? What our study suggested was that uh, gabapentin uh, leads to a reduction in the central nerve or brain uh, sensitisation uh, uh, process. Uh, similar to uh, how we think gabapentin works in patients with neuropathic pain. Um, so uh, so we, 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 we believe that uh, many patients uh, and those that did the, uh, did the best with gabapentin had evidence of central sensitization of their uh, cough nerves. Uh, that is to say those patients that have a, uh, uh, have a uh, cough that doesn't appear to be triggered by, uh, uh, by, by, by stimulus. Uh, so they often complain of a tickly cough or a itch or a scratch or an irritation in their throat. Those patients did particularly well. And, uh, and the mechanism for that, uh, we, we know gabapentin is structurally similar to a uh, neurotransmitter in the brain uh, called GABA. And uh, we think this drug works on uh, calcium ion channels. Uh, uh, that, has, uh, that has an in inhibitory impact on uh, molecules known to cause uh, cough. However, uh, as that mechanism, how gabapentin leads to reduction of cough or reduction of even neuropathic pain is, uh, is uncertain. So how was the, the methodology of the, of the study? What, could you outline that for us then? Uh, sure. Um, so this was a uh, randomised controlled trial where we compared the, a two-month uh, treatment period with gabapentin uh, um, uh, compared against placebo. So gabapentin was given uh, is, a, is, a, is a tablet. Uh, it was given uh, 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 three times a day. The, the dose was 600 milligrams uh, th uh, three times a day. And uh, uh, the dose was uh, initially uh, escalated to a maximum of uh, 1800 milligrams. Similarly, at the end of the treatment period, it was withdrawn uh, gradually. Um, and, uh, and we, uh, we evaluated the uh, impact of gabapentin on cough uh, with a number of uh, outcome parameters, both subjective and objective. And, uh, and, and what, what we found was that this led to uh, an improvement in uh, cough, severity, it's cough severity as reported by patients. Uh, it also led to improvement or a reduction in cough counts measured with automated cough monitors. And, uh, and, uh, and it also led to an improvement in the quality of life of patients. Uh, it had a clinically significant effect uh, in the, about three quarters of patients. So clearly some excellent findings from, from, the, from the study. What would you say are the implications and, and what are the next steps coming out of that? Well, hopefully the uh, gabapentin treatment will lead to improved lives for patients with chronic cough. Uh, the treatment is currently widely available. It's, uh, uh, cost effective, it costs uh, less than £100 per year, um, it's easily deliverable in the community setting and easily manageable by clinicians uh, I think it will lead to uh, clinicians using this widely for patients with chronic, co with, with chronic cough. The next steps I think uh, 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 we need to confirm our findings, um, we need further studies to uh, uh, investigate optimal dose and uh, duration of uh, uh, treatment and how to minimize uh, potential side effects um, and I think this uh, this study uh, is the first to show that uh, targeting uh, uh, the nerves um, that are involved in the mediating cough is potentially very fruitful uh, there are other dr drugs known as neuromodulators uh, available that uh, that can now be tested for patients with chronic cough. 
and hopefully it'll lead to the development of uh, new drugs specifically targeting cough nerves. So I think I th I, 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 this is a very exciting time uh, for, for, uh, for those involved with delivering care for patients with chronic cough. Dr. Bering, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.